Okay, class, let's begin. First question on standard form. Do you have any questions for this? Question one, huh? Okay, showing or working, simplify this. And giving your answer in standard form correct is 3SF. Now what we can do is simply use our calculator. Just be very careful when you're keying in the values. Cannot? Okay. What did you key in? Do you key in exactly or do you try to work out the individual portions first? And then press huh? Use all the brackets. Okay, the rest of you, have you all tried? With your calculator, were there any problems? Okay, you can also simplify first. What else? The rest who use your calculators, were there any problems? Otherwise, be clear later on, come and show me how you use your calculator for it, okay? Now, this is what I will do. I notice that in the class, in the denominator, we can actually factorize. Okay? So, this is equals to 1.3 times 10 to the power of negative 104 times 1.2 times 10 to the power of 107. This is your numerator. Denominator. Okay, let us take out 10 to the power of negative, which is smaller. Negative 102 or negative 103? Negative 103 is smaller, right? So let's take out 10 to the power of negative 103. And I am left with 2.1 times 10. Okay, that is for the first, the first term over here. 2.1 times 10 times 10 to the power of one, negative 103. I will get back this. 2.1 times 10 to the power of negative 102. Okay, then I'm minus 7.1. This is my denominator. So we see that we can continue to simplify, especially when you see your numerator has 10 to the power of negative 104, your denominator, you have 10 to the power of negative 103. Okay, so let us simplify that. This will give us uh, 1.3 times 1.2, what do we get? One point five six times ten to the power of one zero seven. Okay, how do we handle this? The one highlighted. What are we left with when you have ten to the power of negative one zero four divided by ten to the power of negative one zero two? Your loss of indices. We subtract, right? The power on top minus the power below. So negative 104 minus negative 103. It's the same as negative 104 plus 103. And we are left with 10 to the power of negative 1, yes. So this is times 10 to the power of negative 1. We have handled the numerator and the highlighted portions already. So now what we're left with is 2.1 times 10, which is 21 minus 7.1. So 21 minus 7.1, we get in our denominator, it should be 13.9. Okay, so let us continue. It turns out you don't even, okay, you, you do need your calculator, huh? Okay, so 1.56 divided by 13.9. So this is what I will get, 0 0.11223 times 10 to the power of 106. Now in standard form, this is going to give me 1.1223 times 10 to the power of 105. Did you all get that? When, of course, we have to round it off. Lah. So this gives me 1.12 times 10 to the power of 105. I am very particular about this step. I always write down my value. Oh, you all cannot see my highlighted color in blue. Okay, now let's try another one. Okay, that's bad. 1.1223 times 10 to the power of 105. I always show my 5SF before I round it off. And when I round it off, I do not write equal. 
I write the squiggly equal to show that I'm rounding off. Okay, uh, so you're saying earlier steps you rounded off, right? That may cause you to have accuracy problems. You see, tr I try as far as possible to leave all my answers, intermediate ones, exactly in their exact form. So I try not to round off, so I don't lose any accuracy. Yes? Say again? Will you be penalized, is it? Uh, if you know it is the right thing to do, then why don't you just do it? I mean, writing this, writing this versus writing this, the effort is not much different. And you know that this is the correct one, so why don't you just do it? I do not know whether you'll be penalized or not. Lah. Okay, just that I, I prefer to tell you all what should be done. Okay, now question number two. Any questions for this? Question three. Vincent, question three, any problem? You should be looking at your work. Question three, do you have any problems? Do I have a? All of you should have some up. So we are only going through questions that you got wrong and you don't know how to do the corrections. Now question four, anybody needs help? Question five. What are you looking for? My menstruation. I forget now. Check. Bring the whole study diagram and search. Don't lose any of my paper. Five. Question six. Ryan, okay, question six. Okay, uh. seven. Okay. Question eight. Runchen, okay. Question nine. Shooting okay, question nine. Question ten. Kartik, okay. Okay, that's all that there is for standard form. Let us go on to your distance time graph. How many of you have gone online to your class, your Google Classroom? Okay. So this, we need you to keep going there to see if there are any announcements, any notes given to you all, so on and so forth. Because in this question paper that was given to you, some of the grid lines can't be seen, right? Because when we photocopy it out, you cannot see what uh, was in the original copy. So Ms. Tan actually uploaded the soft copy for you to see. Now, question one. Do you guys know which one, which graph is for John, which is for Roger? They didn't specify, right? So if you were to look at the answer key, you will realize that this is for, the one on the left is for John. This is for Roger. Okay, so question one, 70 seconds. The distance between them when time equals to 40, this is why you need the grid to be able to tell when time equals to 40, what are their respective distances. 
So the distance between them will be 300 meters. And part C, describe the motion of John's float from 40 to 70 seconds. From 40 to 70 seconds, what do you notice about his distance? Did the distance change? The distance didn't change, that implies he's at rest. So your answer will be he's at rest, he's stationary, he's not moving. Now we come to part D. Find John's speed when t equals to 85. So how do we find speed from a distance time graph? How do we find the speed from a distance time graph? Distance over time? Can we use distance over time? I mean, that's what we learned, right, in primary school. Speed equals to distance over time. Now you're in secondary school. What do you have to say about what you were taught in primary school? Speed equals to distance over time. Does it apply for every situation? No, it doesn't apply for every situation. Why? What we learned in primary school, speed equals to distance over time, is applicable only for uniform speed. Now, in this case, look at, okay, uh, for John, right, it happens that it is all uniform speed because gradient here is constant. John's speed here uh, is also, the gradient is also constant. Likewise for this portion. Now, what if the question asked you for Roger's speed? Roger's speed when t equals to 60. We now, now we cannot use distance over time. So in part E, we will need to draw a tangent because the tangent will be able to tell us what the gradient is. Okay, so for part D, uh, John's speed, very easy. Just continue to use our distance over time. Or you just find a gradient. I want to focus on point E. When time equals to 60, this is Roger's graph. It is a curve. There is no distance over time that we can use to find the speed. So, take your ruler, mark out this point, time equals to 60. Draw a tangent as long as you can, such that it only touches the graph at one point. I didn't use a ruler because I'm using a tablet, so my answer over here will be inaccurate. You should use your ruler, one tangent. Touch only when t equals to 60, then find the gradient of this straight line. So choose points that are far away, as far as possible, so that you get maximum accuracy. Okay, go ahead and calculate what is the rise, what is the run, and you will realize that the tangent, the gradient is, part E, uh, speed equals to gradient at time equals to 60. And this will give me approximately, when I calculated, it is about 5.0 meters per second. So your answer in your answer key is wrong. It should be approximately 5 meters per second. That's for question 1E. Now question number two. Does anybody need me to go through question two? Okay, I will focus on part D. Find the average speed for the entire journey. Now this person, she walked from her home to a fast food restaurant, stop to buy a burger, walk to a library, so over here she's at a fast food restaurant from this time to this time. And she's at a library from 50 to 60 minutes. This is the library. Then she hit she headed back home. What is the total distance covered? Is it 100 meters? Total distance covered will be 200 because 
from home to fast food, that was 40 meters. Then another 60 meters to reach 100 meters. And then she went back home. So average speed for part E, average speed equals to total distance over total time. That will give me 100 plus 100. And total time is 80 minutes. So that will give me 2.5 meters per minute. Check your units, huh? because especially for speed, sometimes they give it in terms of hours, sometimes in terms of minutes. And then your distance can also vary, kilometers, meters, centimeters. So check what is the unit that they want. Sorry, this is part D. Okay. Now question number three. This time we have a speed time graph. Just like in physics, because this is a, this topic is on kinematics, you learn it in physics also. There are some things that you are expected to understand from your speed time graph. First, what does the gradient tell you? What does the gradient tell you of a speed time graph? What is that? Acceleration. You must always know this. Number two, how do you get the distance from a speed time graph? Yes, so the area under speed time graph equals to distance travel. Please note that this is only applicable for your speed time graph. Okay, so with this, we can attempt the questions. Calculate the acceleration during the first 20 seconds. Where is 20 seconds? They only gave us the information from zero, from time equals zero, speed is zero, from time equals to 30, your speed is 15. And it remains a constant after that for until time equals to 80. What about time equals to 20? It will be somewhere around here. So this is, there, there is a corresponding speed, but what they want now is the acceleration, right? And what do we say from our first point? It is the gradient. Gradient of a speed time drive is your acceleration. So gradient at time equals to 20. Since this is a straight line, your gradient at time equals to 20 will be the gradient at time equals to zero all the way until 30 because it is a straight line. Because the gradient will be the same. So for part A, we can calculate gradient. So A, acceleration equals to Final speed minus initial speed divided by time taken, or just use your gradient. So be 15 minus 0 over 30 minus 0. That will give me half meters. Check the units per square seconds. Okay. Question 3. Yep, half meters per square second. Yes? What's your question? Or oh, you know already? No already, ah? Huh? Of course, you can put it as half meters, seconds to the power of negative two. Same thing. Now, part B, calculate the distance traveled during the first 80 seconds. Now, we are going to use the second part that was highlighted. Distance traveled will be the area under the graph. During the first 80 seconds, so distance traveled will be the area of this parallelogram. A. So area of the parallelogram part B distance equals to half area of a parallelogram, sum of the parallel sides. So at the top over here we have 80 
minus 30 equals to 50. So half of 50 plus 80 times your perpendicular height, which is 15. And I will get 975 meters. That's part B. Okay. Now part C, that's my phone, sorry. Part C, they tell you that the car decelerated at a constant speed. So constant speed. What are we, what do we get from that information about the gradient? Decelerated at a constant speed. Okay, I want you to change the the phrasing. This is not very accurate. Huh? You cannot say that a car decelerated at a constant speed. The car decelerated uniformly. Okay? It decelerated uniformly. So the deceleration will be a constant. That means we are expecting a line that drops down. It is a straight line. It is not a curve. Okay? So one line down. Straight line. That is how we complete the graph. And we do not know the time it took to decelerate. However, we know that total distance is 100, oh, sorry, 1,275 meters. So what does that tell me about the area of this triangle? What does that tell me about this triangle over on the right-hand side? Ryan, what can you tell me about this shaded region? The area. Distance travel, how much is it? The rest of you think, huh? what is this area? This one, the one with the crosses. Yes. Area traveled from in this this crisscross one, huh? This area will be given by 1275 minus 975. Okay? So we can let this timing over here be T. Okay? So the timing over here will be T minus A T. T is what we need to find out, right? Calculate the, no, uh, yeah, total time taken. So, for part C, this is how we can present it. Half times base times height. The base we have calculated to be T minus 80, and the height will be 15. Half times base times height will give me 1, 2, 7, 5, minus 9, 7, 5, because that is the area traveled and solve for t. Therefore, t will be equals to 1, 2, 0. Did you all get it? Did you all get this answer? Big pin. Did you do a work? Yes. What? My question was, did you do your work? Yes. I don't want to hear this kind of excuses again. Huh? Give you one more chance. Huh? That goes for the rest of you as well. Please pack your bag properly the night before. You're in sec 4 already. Bring what you need to bring. If you're not sure what is going to be discussed, check with your friends. Check with your mass rep. Now part D, draw the distance time graph for the whole journey. Okay, there are some important points or timing that we need to take note of. First is 30, the next one is 80, 
and of course the last one will be 120. So your coordinates for these three timings must be correct. Okay? So, uh, distance time graph. What is the distance traveled when time equals to 30? So we, can, we know that it will be the area for this triangle. That will be the distance covered for the first 30 seconds and that will be half times 30 times 15. So that will give me 225 meters in the first 30 seconds. So 30 is over here. 250 meters will be over here. Oops, sorry. Two hundred fifty meters. So put a cross over here. The next point that we are interested in will be at time equals to eighty. When time equals to eighty, we have the distance in part B, which was nine seven five. So at time equals to eighty, over here, nine hundred and seventy five will be around here. So nine seven five. My second coordinate is here. Finally, we know that it comes to uh, the whole process ends at time equals to 120 and total distance is 1275. So over here, 1275. Plot it out. Okay. Once you show me your plots, you get one mark. Must be correct ones up. The next thing, the next thing we have to do is to join it up. So how are we going to join it up? Okay, so I'll let you plot in your points first. Then once you're done, I will tell you how we join the points. Whether it is a curve or a straight line. Or how is it going to curve? Okay, uh, you should have plot, all plotted your points already. Now, in green at the bottom, your gradient of your distance time graph gives you your instantaneous speed. Don't confuse this with gradient of your speed time graph. Gradient of speed time graph gives you acceleration. Gradient of distance time graph gives you the instantaneous speed. Okay, so after we finish plotting our distance time graph, we know that at every single point, its gradient will come in a speed. Okay, so I will just do the portion that is the easiest first. Let us look at time equals to 30 to 80. From time 30 to 80, what is the speed? Second, what is the speed from time equals to 30 to 80? Now, what is the speed? How much is that? 15. Okay. 15 meters per second, that is our speed for this region. So if the speed is a constant, what can we tell about the distance time graph, especially the gradient? If the speed is constant, what is the gradient? It's constant. Okay. Yes, it is a straight line, it is a constant because the speed is constant at 15. So what do we expect for this region? Is it a straight line? Yes, it is a straight line. We have two points. I can only draw one straight line by joining them up. Okay, so use a ruler. Huh? Draw a straight line. Now if I were to calculate the gradient of this straight line, what do you think I'll get? What do you think I'll get if I calculate the gradient? 15, yes. 
I will get 15 because that is supposed to be the speed. So the gradient of the speed time graph gives you a speed. The first one is done. Now, the next part. Let us tackle from time equals to 0 to 30. What do you notice about the speed? The speed is increasing. Okay. Can I try something with this class? I would like you guys to repeat after me. Okay, so apparently this is what they do in China. Uh, when I went to China for my overseas learning journey, for my overseas learning uh, journey, yeah. The teachers will say, and then the students will parrot, will repeat. I think it works because it forces the students to say it, and then you think about what you're saying. As compared to when I just say, some of you may just drift away, and by the time you try to get back, you're not on track anymore. Okay, so let's just try this part, this portion. Uh. The speed from 0 to 30 is increasing. So, 1, 2, 3, go. The speed from 0 to 30 is increasing. Okay, what does that tell me about the gradient for your distance time graph from 0 to 30? If the speed is increasing, what about the gradient? It should be increasing also because the gradient of your speed time graph is the speed. Since the speed is increasing, the gradient must increase. So how do you draw a graph with increasing gradient? We start from zero, something very flat, and then I curve up. Okay, this region is a curve. It has increasing gradient. The increasing gradient represents the increasing speed. Anybody confused? Anna? Are you okay? Gabriela, understand? Okay, with the same argument, let us look at time equals to 80 to time equals to 120. What do you notice about the speed? Xingrei, what do you notice about the speed? It is decreasing. Since the speed is decreasing, what can you tell me about the gradient of the distance time graph? It has to decrease. So starting from here, because it is going to be a smooth graph, my gradient is going to decrease. So it is another curve. With decreasing gradient. So this is another curve. With decreasing gradient. Okay? Yes. Sorry? 225. Oh, sorry. Yes, it should be 225. Thank you. This should be 225. Okay. Uh, has any of your teacher explained this in this manner before? No. Who said no? It's okay. Okay. How did, do you recall how did Miss Tan teach you for this? Okay, then do you recall how did your other teacher teach you for this? Okay, let me tell you what uh, some other approaches are, okay? When you are given a speed time graph like this, and you have to draw a distance time graph. This is what Miss Tan has taught you in the first semester. This is rising. So, it is like a smiley face. Recall something like that? Okay, so this is rising, so it's a smiley face. So, compare that with our graph. This is rising over here, so this is our shape of the smiling face. Okay, and then you have time equals to 80 to time equals to 120. It is going downwards, so it's like a sad face. So, we compare that with 80 to 120. 
it is curving downwards. So it's like a set face. That is another way that some teachers may teach. So what I do is I tell you uh, based on the gradient, how the gradient changes. Okay, let me just spend another three minutes on this question. Because all this is very mathematical so far, <laughs> what is it actually like in reality? Can, I need you to imagine with me. From time equals to zero to time equals to 30, we are increasing our speed. Okay, let's say I'm starting from this end of the classroom. I travel to the door within 30 seconds at an increasing speed. Okay, so just visualize my speed is increasing as I go towards the door. What is the distance covered in the first second as compared to the distance covered in the second second? As compared to the third, fourth, fifth, and sixth. What's the difference? It is going to increase. In the beginning, I have a low speed. In the first one second, I cover a short distance. In the next second, I cover a longer distance. In the third second, I cover an even longer second, uh, an even longer distance. So that can be seen from our distance time graph over here. If we look at the first 10 seconds, compared to the next 10, compared to the last 10 seconds, we see that the, different, the distance covered, this is very small. As compared to the distance covered over here, it is greater. As compared to the last 10 seconds, it is even greater. That is why we have a curve like this. Okay? And then, for time equals to 30 to 80, the distance covered every unit time is the same. That is why we have a straight line, constant gradient. The same argument can be used for time equals to 80 to 120, where the distance covered per unit time decreases. Sorry? 225. Right? Do we get 225? Yeah, 225. Just now I wrote wrongly. I wrote 250. It should be 225. Because the area, the distance covered for the first 30 seconds is 225 meters. Okay? I spent a lot of time on this question because subsequently you will see similar questions and I'll move on faster. Question 4. So speed time graph, again I will do this, gradient equals to acceleration. This is just to remind me, and the second point, uh, area under graph equals distance travel. Whenever you see you're given a speed time graph, just write these two down or at least make sure these two comes to your mind. Because I'm very sure when you're given a speed time graph, you will need to use either one of these. Okay, so just write it down to make it a habit to think of these two. Okay, so part A, calculate the acceleration of the truck. So we're looking at the graph over here. So acceleration must be your gradient. So gradient of the truck in the first six seconds, 12 over six, you get two meters per square second. In part B, speed of the truck when t equals to 13. Okay, this is another type of question that I need to go through with you. t equals to 13 will probably be somewhere here. Yeah. t equals to 13. How do we find the, the speed when t equals to 13? Everybody, please look up, stop writing. I don't think this was uh, covered in Ms. Tan's class. To tackle this style of question, you have a few options. You can find the gradient, sorry, you can find the equation of this graph, then, you substitute when t equals to 13, you find the value of v. 
That is one way you can do it. Another way you can do it is to use similar triangles, where you have this over here, this is 6, this is 13, and this is 16. 13, sorry, this should be 15. Okay, you have a similar triangle, one small triangle that we don't know what this is, and you have a bigger triangle. Use the ratio of the height and the base to find how much this is, and then you subtract or add accordingly. The third method is what I will recommend. Use gradient. It is the easiest way that I feel, okay? What do I mean by that? Using gradient for part C. Let speed at time 13 be V. That tells me that this coordinate will be 13, V. What other coordinates do I have? Okay, I have over here, the coordinates are 6, 12, and at time equals to 15, the speed is 16, right? Oh, we already had the speed of the truck. T equals to 13. Acceleration of the truck. And this one last point over here. This coordinate is 15, 16. Okay? So since these three points, they are all on a straight line, they have the same gradient. So I'm now going to compare the gradient using V minus 12 over, so V minus 12 over 13 minus 6. This should give me the same gradient as comparing this coordinate and this coordinate. So this should be 16 minus 12 over 15 minus 6. Now I have one equation with only one unknown. Sorry? 13 comma V, you see uh, they want the speed when time equals to 13. So I let the speed be V when time equals to 13. Oh, this V. Uh. Okay, well, then let's call it V2. Uh. Let's call it V2. Uh. Okay? So now, solve the equation. V2 minus 12 equals to 4 over 9 times 6. Sorry, no, not 6. Times 7. So V2 is equals to Twenty-eight over nine plus twelve. So you get fifteen and one over nine meters per second. This is using gradient. It is by far the most straightforward way of doing it. So part D, finding the distance traveled by the truck in the first 15 seconds is simply the area under the graph. You can do that. Gabriella, do you need to wash your face? Okay, next. Let us go on to part E. Given that it started from the same point, find the time taken for the car to overtake the truck. What do we understand when 
a car overtakes the truck, what should we look out for in the graph? Yes, Ryan, you say something about distance? Huh? Intersect? Okay, when, yes. When a vehicle overtakes another vehicle, they meet each other at the same time, at the same distance. Same time, same distance, that is when they overtake. Can we tell that from this graph? We, we look at this graph, right? hey, it looks like there is an intersection point over here. Is this where they met? What do you all think? Is this where they met? I don't know what this time is. Lah. Let, let's just call it T. Did they meet at this time T? No, they didn't. At this time T, their speeds are the same. They have the same speed. But that doesn't mean they met each other. Rather, how do we get distance from your speed time graph? A rounded the graph. So if they travel the same distance, what can you tell me about the area under the graph? Yeah, the area under the graph must be the same. That is what we are looking for. Okay? For part E, we are looking for the time where the area under the two graphs are the same. So let us compare. Let's just randomly choose some timing, okay? Time equals to 6. What is the distance traveled by the truck? This big triangle, right? What is the distance traveled by the car? The small one. So they can't be the same area. Okay. Let us compare this timing over here, where they happen to have the same speed. When they happen to have the same speed, what is the distance traveled by the truck? It is the area under the under this. This is the area traveled by the truck. And then at this same time, what is the area traveled by the car? It is this triangle. Can they have the same area? Cannot be. So this cannot be the time also. Let us continue. At time equals to 15, for example. Okay. What is the area traveled by the car, uh, by the truck? Time equals to 15. We have this area. This is traveled by the truck. And then let us compare with the area under the graph for the car. I'm going to highlight it in yellow. This portion. Do you think these two areas could be the same? No, right? Because the area for the car is this little, there's this extra little triangle. It can't be the same as this area over here. So I know I have to continue to the right somehow. They need more, the car needs more time to catch up. Okay, so instead of just going through and guess and check, I am going to let the time that a car overtake B. Yeah, you can let it be X, can let it be T. Since we are dealing with time, I rather, I, my preference, I let it be T. T over here. I am going to say that the area under the car, uh, under the graph for the car, meaning this triangle, is the same area as area under the truck for this region. That is when they met. And that is when they overtake. You follow the logic so far? Big pin? Go ahead, wash your face. Go ahead, wash your face. Okay. So, let part E, let time of overtaking B T. That tells me that distance traveled by car is equal to area under the graph, right? So ha times the base. What is the base? From six, uh, from, from five. From five to T. So the base will be t minus 5 times the height, which is
Moi, j'ai des stats Travel Car. Oh. We do we have the speed of the car? So let's let this be. Okay. Uh, before that, we need to find out what is this speed of the car when time equals to t. Because we need the area of this triangle, isn't it? So half times the base times the height. So let's find v3. We have the gradient of the line. We can find v3. Okay, so v3 minus zero over time, which is t. I'm using, I'm comparing the gradient, huh? is equals to earlier on v part c, we had Two times t minus five. Half times base times height. Distance traveled. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Please go ahead. Okay, did anybody get an answer for this question? 16.1 seconds? Nobody got it. Part E. Question for part E. Yeah. This point over here, is it? This is the time when the speeds are the same. It is not where they overtake. 2 times t minus 5. This is the gradient. Okay, uh, let me let me check this question again. I will get back to you later on okay but the the concept is correct i just need to go and verify this value of v3 okay the concept that i told you is correct we have to compare the area under this triangle versus the area of this odd looking shape at this timing the speeds the the distance underneath will be the same and that is how we get the value of t okay now question five Does anybody need me to go through this one? Part C, is the answer given to you? Drawing the acceleration? Is it given to you all? Okay. So in your speed time graph, the gradient is equal to your acceleration. Okay, so we can calculate the gradients over here this one should be 1. The gradient equals to 1. This region gradient is 0 0.4. Gradient equals to 0. And gradient equals to negative 1. So these are the four regions. 
plotting out for part C will simply be 0 to 20. It is constant gradient implying constant acceleration. So horizontal line, flat line. From 20 to 45, constant gradient again of 0 0.4. So like this, from 45 to 75, gradient is 0. So the value will be 0. Make sure you draw it such that the person marking can see it. And finally, from time 75 to 105, gradient is negative 1. So over here. Don't worry that the graph, your graph huh, is interrupted. It is not continuous. It is okay. Okay, question six. We have the speed time graph of a van. It starts from rest at zero at O and accelerates uniformly. And I silence. Accelerating uniformly, telling you that the gradient is a constant. Until it reaches 1.8 kilometers per minute, continue at constant speed, then it decelerates uniformly. Okay? until it reaches P. Find the speed at time equals to 0, 08, 0, 09. So somewhere around here, 0, 08, 0, 09, we want to find this speed. Okay. To find this speed, again, we can use gradient. We can use similar triangles, you can find the equation on the line. So I will choose to use gradient. Let speed at t equals to 0809h v v. So this is v. Okay, comparing the gradient. V minus 0 over 9 minutes is equals to 1.8 minus 0 over 30 minutes. So V will be 1.8 over 30 times 9 and you will get 0 0.54 km per minute. So this is 0 0.54. Find the distance from O to P. Meaning the whole area under the graph. Yes, Yuri? Retardation is deceleration, which is negative acceleration. Please take note that these three are the same. Negative acceleration, deceleration, retardation. Go ahead. Uh, you can call it the rate of change of velocity. Uh. Okay. Distance from O to B of to P. So distance equals area under the graph, which is half times the sum of the parallel sides, which is 20 minutes over here. Then 60 minutes times the perpendicular height, which is 1.8, and you get 72 kilometers. Find the retardation during the last two minutes.
Okay, please take note over here. Plus, look out on the screen. Look out, look out. Part C, we need to find the retardation. So, some of you may be confused with the negative signs. Then you don't know what is it going to be like. So don't worry about it. Just follow these steps. Retardation, write it down. It is your negative acceleration. And then you can choose to continue. It is your negative gradient, isn't it? Because acceleration is gradient. So what is the gradient for the last two minutes? The gradient for the last two minutes, meaning this region, we find the gradient. So rise over a run of final minus initial over the time taken. So 0 minus 1.8 over 0 0,900 minus 0 0,850 is actually 10 minutes. So we get 0 0.18 kilometers per minute square. So all the signs, your positive, negative, they'll work out properly by themselves if you are consistent with your formula. Yes, you can write deceleration, but the question asks you for retardation, you might as well write retardation. Lah. Okay, question part D. Sketching our distance time graph, it is similar to what we did in question 4. Okay, so using the, the smiling face and the sad face method, this region from 0800 to 0830 is rising. So should it be a smiling face or a sad face? Parisha? 8 o'clock to 8.30. What does the graph look like? Straight or curved? Okay, in the speed time graph, it's a straight line rising upwards. What will the distance time graph look like? Say again. Curve. Okay, how a curve? Is it going to look like a smiling face or is that this? Smiling face, because uh, it's rising up. So we can do it this way. Then, what happens from time equals to 8.30 to 8.50? Time equals to 8.30 to 8.50. What do you notice about the speed? The speed is constant, so my gradient for my distance time graph will be constant also. It will be a straight line. So straight line going up, and finally the speed time graph drops downwards. So we are expecting again a curve, specifically something that looks like a sad face. So over here, okay, so this is a curve, this is a curve. This is a straight line. Earlier on, I also told you that these values are important. So if you do your calculations properly, you should get 63 over here, 27, and the final one on top will be 72. Okay, these three points. Any questions so far? Let's move on to question eight, okay, seven. Okay, question seven. Anybody needs me to go through part A, part B? Part A. Let me just write out the answer for part A first. Huh? This is 20 meters per second.
Okay. Part B is another kind of question that we haven't gone through before. We are finding the acceleration from a distance time graph. Usually, we find acceleration from our speed time graph, right? But in this case, we don't have our speed time graph. It is very useful to sketch our speed time graph. Okay, let me show you how. Huh? For part B, first 10 seconds until here. So this over here is a curve. Okay, let's draw our speed time graph. They said that it has a constant acceleration. So my speed time graph until 10 seconds will have a constant gradient. It is sloping upwards because this looks like a smalling face. Okay? So one straight line. Now, we want to find this gradient. Do we know what is the distance traveled in the first 10 seconds? How much is the distance traveled in the first 10 seconds? 100 meters. That is from our graph. Okay? So what can you tell me about the area underneath this graph? What's the area underneath this speed time graph? 100. Because that's the distance traveled. So this must be 100 as well for the area. Anjali, can follow? Can I? So let this speed be V. Let speed at 10 seconds be V. Okay? Therefore, distance traveled. What? 20? How do you get 20? 400. Yeah? Yeah, yeah I'm, I'm showing you the complete working. First, you need to state what V is. You cannot just use V without telling me what it is. Okay? So distance traveled will be 100, which is half times 10 times V. This is equals to 100. Therefore, V equals to 20 meters per second. So this is equals to 20. Now that we have the velocity at time equals to 10, we can find the acceleration. Therefore, acceleration is equals to 20 minus 0 over 10, which is 2 meters Per square second. Uh, what is this? So acceleration equals to 20 minus 0 over 10 equals to 2 meters per square second. Okay, so that's for part B. So in part C, to find to draw the speed time graph, we already have the starting part. We sketched it out already. This is over here, 20. So when time equals to 10, your speed is equals to 20. So when time equals to 10, speed must be 20. One point over here. We say that it has a constant acceleration. So your gradient will be one straight line. Then it moves at a constant speed until time equals to 25. Yep, from your graph, you have until time goes to 25. So this is another point we have. Two straight lines. Question 8.
you have two cars again. Now is your speed time graph so brilliant. It goes to uh, acceleration. Distance. Area equals to distance travel. Does anybody need me to go through part A? No? Part A. Okay. A accelerates from rest to a speed of 20 in time of 5 seconds. Continue. Car B starts 5 seconds later, accelerate to 20 to V in 20 seconds. Then we can't swim formally. Okay. Car B overtake A after A has traveled for 25 seconds. When A has traveled for okay. When A has traveled for 25 seconds, the area under the graph will be for A. This is the area under the graph for A at time 25. And at the same time, car B would have traveled the same distance. So I will use blue color to show you the distance traveled by car B at by the time you have time equals to 25. So area under this graph. So the yellow region must have the same area as the blue region. And we can form equations to find out what this value of V is. Okay? So for A, distance for car B will be half times base times height. 20 minus 5 times V. So this will be 20 10, 10 V. This is the distance traveled by car B. It is 10 V meters. And in red, distance traveled by A will be half times the sum of the parallel sides, which is 25 plus 20 times the height, the vertical height, which is 20. This is 45, 4, 5, 0. Okay? The distance for A and B must be the same. Therefore, we conclude that 10 V equals to 4, 5, 0. And V must be equal to 45 meters per second. Okay, Gabriela? Part B. Anybody needs me to go through? Part B. If not, okay, I'll give you all some time to note this down. B, you need, you need. Okay. Given that the magnitude of the deceleration of B is twice the magnitude of its acceleration. Okay. So acceleration of car B. We need to find that first. That will be. 45 minus 0 over 25 minus 5. This is equals to 45 divided by 20, which is 9 over 4. This is, okay, the deceleration, huh? deceleration of B is your negative acceleration for this region, huh? So negative 
find the gradient find the gradient of this line okay so over here we have 25 comma 45 can you find the deceleration do you expect the deceleration to be a positive number why not so why wouldn't it be a positive number it is not going back it might not be going backwards the the speed is reducing it's going down it can still be going in the forward direction okay now look at this part what can you tell me about the acceleration from time equals to 25 to t the last portion acceleration is it positive or negative acceleration is negative acceleration is negative because the gradient you see that it is negative it is slowing down therefore your deceleration will be positive because it is the opposite okay okay so the deceleration of part b will be negative the gradient okay so what is the gradient zero minus 45 over time t minus 25 this is our deceleration how much would that be 45 over t minus 25 okay now we have our acceleration and our deceleration we got from the question that the deceleration is twice the magnitude of the acceleration so 45 over t minus 25 is equals to 2 times of 9 over 4 and you can solve for t to get 35 okay okay moving on question 9 Anybody needs me to go through part A? 9A. 9B. Nine 9C. Nine Vincent, 9C. Did you do? When I ask you, do you do? You have to look at your work, not look at the screen. You didn't do. Why not? Why do I do? So the whole thing you didn't do. Where's the paper? Oh, you didn't come for the extra lesson during the holidays. So you took picture from friends, is it? Do you take everything? Do you take every single question? then it is your responsibility to go and find out the questions. Okay, question nine, anybody needs me to go through? Okay, question 10. Anybody needs me to go through this? Then hmm? G. Oh, I think this question got something wrong with the answer key. Okay, uh, for 10, Question 10, uh, the answer for part E should be 45 and 5 over 7 kilometers per hour. For part F, because you don't have the grid, right? For part F, your answer will be approximately 96 kilometers per hour. Okay? For part G, Before I go on to part G, uh, anybody needs help for A, B, or C? D, part E, what about part F? Okay, then let's look at part G. 
A second vehicle leaves B at time equals to 100, 10, 10 100 hours. Constant speed. Okay, if he is if he is leaving point B, then this is our starting. Okay, on your graph, sketch it out. Sketch this point. This is the second car starting point. Okay, and he is traveling at a constant speed of eighty kilometers per hour towards A. How long will he take to reach? A. Sorry, uh, how long will it take to reach uh, point A? If he's traveling at 80 kilometers per hour, then he takes one hour to travel 80 kilometers because that's the, that's the distance between A and B, right? So 80, he takes one hour to travel to finish the journey, so I draw one line down, straight line. Okay, one straight line now, huh? I can't draw a straight line properly. Give an estimate of the time when these two vehicles meet. So this will be an approximate of the time where they meet. This is the timing, and this is the distance. So what's the time? It is about 10, 15 now. Okay, do you get it? Part G is about 10, 15. Okay, question 11. Question 11, part A, don't need to go through. B, anybody needs help? Part C. And part D. Well, this one should be quite straightforward, huh? And finally, question 12. Top A. 12 B. C. And D. Okay, there isn't any more. Then that is the end of all your holiday assignments. Our remaining time will be given to you to finish up the work that you owe me while I go back to, I think it was question four. What? I'll let you all know.